Here, we are going to take a look at a correction needed in sundials because of the tilt in Earth's axis. So we'll start with this Earth and we'll show Earth's axis over here. And I've also shown this equator in red. And around the Earth, we are going to imagine a sphere, an imaginary screen on which all the celestial bodies will be parked. So this celestial sphere will also have lat longs like Earth. In fact, there are Earth's latitudes and longitudes projected onto it. So we can find our way around. And uh, just like Earth has an equator, this too will then acquire an equator. This is called a celestial equator. And on this celestial equator, we will imagine an ideal sun. Okay, this is not the real sun, but it is uh, you know, the perfect sun, which won't uh, need any correction in the sun dial. So this sun is going around this uh, celestial equator at a uniform rate. Let us now contrast this with the real life situation where Earth's axis is not normal to the apparent path of the sun, but it is tilted at some angle. And therefore the actual path of the sun, the so-called ecliptic, is going to be inclined like this. So I have shown uh, the ecliptic in yellow here. And we know that uh, these two, uh, the ideal path and the actual path are inclined to each other at 23 and half degrees. Then we are going to set our actual sun into orbit. So now we have two suns, one ideal and the actual. And we will be contrasting their motions. So just to focus on that, we'll get rid of the celestial sphere and these lat longs. And we are going to watch it in the top view. So right now we are going to look along the Earth's axis. So the celestial equator would appear like a perfect circle, but the ecliptic, which is a circle really, would now appear like an ellipse. Let us see what difference that makes. And to observe it uh, better, I have shown these two radii coming from Earth's center to the two suns that we have. And you will see as they move, uh, the real sun is speeding up. It has now got ahead of our imaginary sun. But it again slows down and the two coincide here. Then it starts lagging behind. You can see the yellow one is behind, but it has caught up with the real sun again. Then it speeds up, goes ahead, but again slows down and the two catch up. And this goes on around the year. Okay, So about two times our real sun is going to speed up and slow down. That whole cycle is going to repeat two times in a year. Now what difference does it make and why we are observing it in the top view? Well, let us get back to our lat longs here. So these are the longitudes okay, projected on the celestial equator. And we keep time using longitudes. When the sun comes over a longitude, we say it is 12 o'clock there. And therefore, this view is important. We are not uh, being unfairly biased to you know, the real sun or the imaginary sun. We are just going by how we keep time. We keep time using longitudes and therefore we have to keep track of when they come on the longitude. Sundials are based on the imaginary sun while the real sun is going to lag behind it or go ahead of it uh, at times. And therefore we are going to need some correction. Now what will be the nature of this correction? Well, it will be positive sometimes and sometimes it will be negative. It's going to be periodic. It's going to have two cycles in a year and it's going to be sinusoidal. So let us see uh, what it results into. Let us summarize the two errors that we looked at and plot them on a graph. On the x-axis, we have taken the time, the whole year, starting from 1st Jan. And on the y-axis, we have taken the deviation uh, or the correction caused by the deviation of real sun from the ideal sun. And this we have taken in minutes. Okay, Sometimes we have to add the minutes, sometimes we have to subtract the minutes. So we are going to plot these two errors that we looked at. This one is because of tilt of Earth's axis. Uh, and you can see there are two cycles here, two sinusoidal cycles. While the other error, because of eccentricity of Earth's orbit, the orbit being an ellipse rather than a perfect circle, uh, we have this one cycle. And then we can plot the resultant of the two. And this is a simple matter of adding their ordinates. So I'm going to take the Y coordinate of the blue and the green graph and plot them as this red resultant. And if we keep adding them, you'll see whenever they have the same sign, they will add up to something more. While they have opposite signs, they will try to cancel each other and the error would be less. And because these two errors are not having the same wavelength uh, or the same period, uh, the resultant is not going to be sinusoidal, but something that looks pretty erratic like this. So let us look at the resultant, uh, just the resultant over here. Uh, this resultant 
gives us what is the correction needed at any given day. Okay? This is called the equation of time. 